my name is Estelle Metayer. I'm the president of Competia and a board director. And I'm very happy to be here today with Laurel Broughton and Bess Mason. Good morning. Good morning. Laurel and Bess, I'm going to let you introduce yourself uh, and then I'll lead up to questions about uh, why you're here at uh, Moving On today. Great. Go ahead. I'm Laurel Broughton, President and CEO of Nova Scotia Business Inc., a crown corporation that does economic development for Nova Scotia, Entreprise Nouvelle Ecosse. Very nice. I'm Beth Mason, CEO of the Vashuran Center, which is an industry research oriented center at Cape Breton University in Nova Scotia. So we're going to dive into the world of Nova Scotia today. <laughs> and the first question is, um, I've learned that Michelin has been in Nova Scotia for 50 years with a very particular approach. So tell yes. us about it. Great. Uh, so uh, Michelin uh, came to Nova Scotia more than 40 years ago as they were looking for a place for North American operations. Um, they now have three plants, more than 3,000 people uh, working for them. And they really sought out to build community, to create community to develop their workforce, and to be the heartbeat of three different rural communities in Nova Scotia. So fast forward to today, it makes sense uh, that we're here working side by side with them to look at what is the future state of mobility, the future state of communities. Um, so it's very exciting for us. We're privileged to have them. They're a great uh, corporate leader and you would know that from being at this event and the leadership that they've taken. Excellent. And then we have you coming from the academic field. So tell us about this partnership that has to happen in terms of mobility and other businesses between the public sector, between universities, and then those businesses who you want to promote? Yeah, for sure. There's often a little bit of a disconnect between the research uh, and the impact it can have in industry. And so it's key to us, um, particularly in the ecosystem that we're trying to build in Nova Scotia, that, that we fill those gaps. And connecting directly with, with industry partners like Michelin and universities and colleges, which we have a lot of in, in Nova Scotia, gives us that what I call pipeline to get innovation into reality. And I think Michelin has positioned itself now to uptake some of that and to engage directly in that on the sustainability side. And I would just add to that, you know, I've had the privilege to live all across Canada, including here in Montreal for a number of years. And in Nova Scotia, the secret special sauce is the connectivity between private, public sector, university, all really working together. Uh, we know each other, we do that work together, and I think that's a model that is a good one for us to look at when we're looking for sustainable solutions in the future. Everybody has a stake in it and everybody has a role to play. And I think that's part of what we're trying to do here at Moving On. Excellent. Can you give us some examples about how concretely you might have worked together on some initiatives and how this partnership is actually coming to fruition? Sure. Yeah. So, Beth. Um, Laurel's team have been quite instrumental uh, in that connectivity in bringing industry partners to um, academic institutions uh, and also connecting those institutions together. So as much as we have small entities like ourselves and our colleges, we have a wide reach across Canada and also across to Europe too. So with the new trade relations, we're seeing a lot of engagement with European uh, universities and industries who see uh, the capacity to come to Canada and, and either pilot technologies or replicate what's being done in Europe to accelerate our, our decarbonization uh, goals. So, uh, you know, we, we just have good connectivity across institutional and with industry partners. There's almost an insatiable de demand in industry for, for, you know, being able to do that. Because uh, also what we find is large corporations often tend not to house the R&D themselves. Yeah. It's a large cost to, a, to an organization. Yeah. And so if you can connect with other partners, then you can make it happen quicker yeah. and more effectively. And to have the perspective of a large uh, corporate like Michelin to bring them to the table, you know, uh, we were saying, how can we further drive innovation in Nova Scotia? And so three years ago, really at, at this moving on event three years ago, I sat with the then president of Michelin North America, Pete Selleck, and our president of Michelin North America Canada, um, Jeff McLean, and we talked about how do we drive innovation? Fast forward, we've created a tool and a toolkit that both drives innovation for um, connecting to 
university type innovation and drives big productivity and innovation in some of our corporates. And Michelin is one of the companies that is going to be doing that in Nova Scotia. So you really need those perspectives at the table to get the toolkit right, uh, to find the solutions that we all want to find. Okay. So, so there's a connection, it's the toolkit and something very Absol tangible. Yeah, absolutely. Now when we talk about Nova Scotia, we have in mind uh, the sea and the ships, and I understand the theme late, uh, last year was moving on oceans, but you went beyond that in terms of mobility today to incorporate uh, particularly the energy side of absolutely. mobility and, and for the future. So tell us a little bit about why Nova Scotia is, settle, is interested sure. in energy storage and, 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 yeah. and production. So maybe I'll let Beth uh, jump in. What I would just say is I think it ties to the ambition to action that Florent Manigo talked about this morning. You know, I was privileged to serve as a Minister of Environment. We had a lot of ambition. We needed the action. And so that I aspect of bringing in folks like the creators of electricity where Nova Scotia Power is on its way to 40% renewables, met its target in 2017 and now driving to a 2020 target. That's critical because electrification of vehicles requires clean energy and that's a key part of it. You can't have the newer technologies without the storage. So Jeff Don is, has the only um, Canadian partnership with Tesla, working out of Dalhousie University, and then Beth is driving a lot of exciting initiatives in Cape Breton, and all of those are part of the puzzle to get us where we want to get to. Yeah, and, and I guess uh, because of the interconnectivity and also the fact that, that we are a province that majorly has to decarbonize, mm -hmm. um, w our focus is, is, is you know, decarbonizing our thermal uh, footprint, which yeah. is half of, of your energy demand. Yeah. If we do that and we electrify uh, mobility, there's a massive demand for renewable. There's no point to do that if you still have a carbon-based energy uh, system. And so we're not only driven to, to look at further renewable development, but as you said, key to that is the storage. And so not only are, are our institutions looking at the classic lithium storage, but we have companies in zinc uh, battery production. We're working with a large company from Toronto on, on actually a carbon-based graphite thermal storage. So there's lots of storage solutions. And because of, of the connectivity, we're all uh, looking at specific aspects of that bigger picture, because it's going to be a number of players that come to market, not just one. Yeah. And, right. and the storage is going to be key to the puzzle of, of ur urban and non-urban mobility and, and electrification yeah. of mobility so much. Yeah, absolutely. Sure, right? and, so. and, and Nova Scotia is positioned particularly well in terms of resources. We're one of the windiest places in the country, <laughs> which is not always a selling point, but, uh, you know, and even our, our solar uh, capacity is, is huge large geothermal, so we have the capacity to produce, and I think that's why we're all focused uh, kind of connectedly yep. on storage uh, on, and different storage. Missing link, right? Yeah. yeah, and I think the people that choose to call Nova Scotia home, Beth and I, two examples of that, we are connected to nature. We want to do our part um, to make sure that our children and generations to come have clean oceans, clean air, uh, but you know, no one is going to turn back the clock. We all want to be interconnected through technology. We all want to do work all around the world. And the rest of the world is looking for those solutions. So Canada needs to be part of driving that. And I think the corporate leaders who are here uh, working, you know, as partners to Michelin on this summit are trying to drive and find those solutions. Um, and you know, one of the things that we know from corporate boards where we've both done some work on, the more diverse perspectives you bring in to a conversation, the more innovation you will have, the more r managed risk appetite you will have. And so I think that that's a takeaway from here. Bring different people from different parts of the ecosystem to all be part of the conversation. And you don't know what kind of solutions you'll find. I think you're going to get some pretty good ones. I'd like to bounce on the, uh, on the, on the diversity, uh, not only because this is a women's panel in a mobility conference, and I think that's going to be the exception. So again, I want to applaud the moving on for organizing this. But uh, on the diversity, and we talked about you know, the talent that goes yes. behind that innovation, um, we hear more and more about universities in Nova Scotia attracting new types of talents and being very innovative in their approach. I was probing you on the uh, war for talent that is uh, often a, a fight for a lot of companies. So tell us about the ability for Nova Scotia to attract that talent and to retain it. Yeah. 
Well, Beth has seen firsthand. I mean, we draw students from all around the world to Nova Scotia. Um, you know, the number of universities that we have, um, 13 uh, universities and a community college with campuses right across the province, drawing international students in who want to stay. So absolutely, it's a global uh, competition for talent. But what we have is the ability to bring in talent who, who come for education and then who want to stay. And that's a key part of uh, the talent pool that yeah. you would be seeing and that are working in your uh, in your organization right now. We do, we do. I mean, I have a large number of grad students, mostly international. Um, so I think too the flexibility that small institutions like mm -hmm. our, you know, community college and and our uh, universities, we have quite a number of smaller ones. They're flexible enough to adjust those programs to attract that talent, yeah. and 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 in a manner whereby it's relevant to industry. And I think that's one of the nice things about having the variety of institutions, but also the connectivity between them, that we are attracting international yep. talent. Yeah. Um, and then that, that talent hopefully will stay yep. uh, and add to the ecosystem. You know, you talked about this being a women's panel and we started our morning this morning with a women's breakfast. And we do that to bring women in, in an environment where we can connect with each other. Um, and I think that when you think about people's desires. No one more so than mothers want to build a sustainable future for their kids. And no one more so when we have international students coming, um, they want to build a good life for themselves. And so the ability then to find a pathway to be able to stay in Canada is critical. And in Atlantic Canada, we've developed, uh, working with the federal government, an immigration pilot path because they want to come to school, they want to build a community, connectivity, and stay and be part of making that place great um, and that's what we want as well right, right across Canada. Exactly, it's the ideal world when you can retain your students in the province to work. Um, we are running out of time so I just wanted to let you maybe a few minutes if you want to pass on a message. <laughs> uh, it's the right time to do that. To yeah. Beth, go ahead. Well, I would say our message is that, that we're, we're building the future. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. We have technologies today. We need to make it happen. And I think the nice thing about where we're coming from now is that we are on the way to making it happen. This kind of environment is just that, that um, we don't have to wait for tomorrow. We can't afford to wait till tomorrow. We have to do it today. And I think that we're creating that system here and at home to do that. Action, action. Yeah. And today. Yes, Absolutely. that's right. And a collective action. No one is going to be able to solve the issue on your own. You're going to need to piece together, um, you know, when you're tackling climate change, you do all the wedges and you think what will get us there. I think when we're talking about a sustainable future, we need to do all the pieces. Technology is going to be part of it. Engineering is going to be part of it. A better tire is going to be part of it. A better car, a better mm -hmm. energy system. Those are all pieces to the puzzle. Um, and I would just simply say that, um, you know, I believe having chosen Nova Scotia as home, the people in Nova Scotia want to be part of that solution. We want to work with corporate players like Michelin. That's why we've chosen to be here today. Thank you very much, Beth and Lauren, for uh, this discussion. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much.